Yo, I got a 4080 in my rig that did it all. So I've been dodging NVIDIA's, you need an upgrade call. But now they dropped the 5080, is this hype real or shady? I mean, it's the Mercedes got my palms all sweaty. Yo. We're taking a deep dive into the RTX 50 series in terms of new features and performance to see if it's worth eating Maggi and skipping bubble tea every day. I got you covered no matter if you are China, Malay, India, or Matsale. Don't play play. To give credit where it's due, Nvidia did launch the RTX 5080 at 999 US dollars MSRP, which is 200 US dollars less than the 4080, a step towards the right direction. The bigger question is, should you be upgrading if number one, you are using an older graphics card like the RTX 3080, or number two, if you're using the relatively new RTX 4080 or 4080 Super. Full disclaimer, Nvidia did send over this RGB-licious RTX 5080 for me to make this video, but as usual, we reserve our right to an unbiased opinion. Also, I've always been a graphics simp all my life and have not skipped a generation of graphics cards since the GTX 480 and now obsolete 3D monitors. So I was gonna get around to it eventually. Shut up, you're old. Anyways, a little intro about the RTX 5080. It's got 10.5% more CUDA, RT and Tensor cores than the 4080. We're also getting an upgrade to PCI Gen 5 from Gen 4, which should give us theoretically double bandwidth per lane. And finally, to make this card more future-proof against newer titles, higher resolution gaming, and also professional applications, the RTX 5080 has 25% more VRAM than the 4080. Uh, in a newer GDD r 7 format compared to the GDDR6X on the 4080. Also, check out this Palit GeForce RTX 5080 game rock. It didn't just show up, it rocked up like a full-on rave. Those trippy RGB waves pulse harder than your favourite EDM set. So hard, in fact, that it belongs to the streets of Night City. It's got three fans, two more than your TikTok account. Hello auntie, who will definitely be impressed by the chonky heatsink that will keep this card running cool, unlike her Anna. To give you a general idea on how the RTX 5080 stacks up, we've included a bunch of benchmarks looking at what Nvidia calls brute force performance. All right, nerd fam, peep the specs on screen while I flex this absolute unit of a test rig for a hot sec. Moving on before y'all get pressed and take it personally enough to drop a comment. Wink. Anyways, let's kick things off with a quick look at 3D Mark scores. In Fire Strike, the RTX 5080 delivers up to 27% more firepower than the 4080, and a huge 60% over the 3080 in older titles. Not quite as impressive in Time Spy, but it indicates that we should get up to a 17% gain over the 4080 and 60% gain over the 3080 in more modern titles. From here on out, I'm gonna stop mentioning the 3080 because it's old news. Now time for some actual games. In Doom the Dark Ages, the RTX 5080 holds only a tiny 5% lead over the 4080 at 1440p and 10% at 4K. Cyberpunk tells a similar story with gains up to 14%, while Stalker's 2 edges slightly higher at 17%. The 5080 did show clearer gains in Starfield with a 21% lead and really shined in Black Myth Wukong with a 33% boost over the 4080. Overall, with the RTX 5080, on average, you're looking at a 12% uplift at 1440p and 18% at 4K, closely matching the 3D Mark results. That might not look like much compared to last gen, but which bangsawan games on an Nvidia graphics card without turning on ray tracing? Night City was a mess, but it had those realistic reflections, moody lighting, full-on cinema vibes. Something about staring at puddles after dispensing justice on a bunch of tiger claws just hits different. Y'all just salty because you're gaming on a microwave. Woman Puyang! These days, if a game doesn't support ray tracing, even if it looks good, I find that I'm missing that little bit of seasoning. Take this new Doom Dark Ages game for instance. Notice how much more immersive the game looks when I switch on power Half tracing. In my opinion, realistic lighting acts like a glue that binds your character to the environment together so you feel like you're really in the thick of it. The RTX 5080 comes with all new 4th gen RT cores which on paper has 100% faster BVH traversal. Basically, it figures out what a ray hits 
twice as fast. This means that the performance hit from turning on RTX is definitely way less with the RTX 5080 compared to previous generation cards, especially if your GPU is running on less VRAM. And at higher resolutions like 4K, with RT settings maxed out where we are aiming for 60 FPS, every frame counts. Even a 12% improvement is actually quite noticeable IRL. But if you want to fully utilize your 4K 240Hz monitor like a Bang Sawan, DLSS is a must. We get an upgraded DLSS 4.0. And no, it's not just 0.5 times better than DLSS 3.5. DLSS has evolved quite a bit throughout the years. The TLDR is that DLSS 1.0 gave us AI upscaling. 2.0 gave us AI upscaling that looks better. 3.0 gave us AI generated extra frames. 4.0 gave us AI generated extra frames that looks better. That's pretty much the gist of it. And how you enable DLSS differs from game to game. In Doom Dark Ages, for example, head into settings, video, scroll down to the DLSS section, and you'll find options like DLSS super resolution with presets and DLSS frame generation. With the RTX 5080, you'll find options for multi frame generation hidden here. MFG uses a different AI model with temporal context that references multiple previous frames instead of just one, giving us smoother motion as well as better visual stability with less ghosting, hood flicker, and jitter in fast-paced games like, well, Doom. Games that support MFG natively will have options for you to switch between 2x, 3x, and 4x, which will increase your FPS accordingly. While frames generated with the new AI model looked better, they still contained visible visual artifacts in some situations, especially when movement is unpredictable. I find that unless you're a pixel peeping creeper, the improved smoothness generally outweighs the occasional visual oopsie. Another thing to note is that when you turn on on MFG, your latency will get worse. Which is why some argue that the FPS you gain is not a real improvement in performance because performance is dependent on latency. Ideally, you want to have a base frame rate of at least 80 to 100 FPS before turning on MFG to keep your latency still low. Having this higher base frame rate will also produce way less visual artifacts. Coincidentally, moral of the story, a Bangsawan graphics card is not just a weird flex, it's a necessity. Wow, it rhymes. Clap, clap for me. Speaking of weird flex, let's talk about NVIDIA Reflex. Oh yeah, if you've been sleeping on computers since the Pandaroo, you probably missed out on NVIDIA Reflex. It cuts down latency by making your CPU and GPU actually communicate like a healthy couple. So your GPU stops overthinking and spamming a bunch of useless frames. Sounds familiar? To activate it in your game, under settings, go to NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Plus Boost and switch it on. Even though I've told so many people about this, they are convinced that I'm being an NVIDIA shrill, okay? It's not, okay? This is an actual competitive advantage, not just good marketing. You guys don't even know about it, then I guess the marketing wasn't that good. I also quickly want to talk about Ray. I mean, if that's your name, hi. Ray Reconstruction is what I'm talking about, which was included with DLSS 3.5. It uses a new transformer-based AI model to make ray trace lighting, reflections, and shadows look sharper and more realistic. It is still compatible with older RTX 40 and 40 Super cards, but definitely runs better on these new bad boys, the RTX 50 GPUs. Here's a quick rundown on DLSS features and whether or not your NVIDIA graphics card will support them. You're welcome. Are you done yet? Can we move on? I can't even say move. What's wrong with my mouth? Move, move. I got overdeveloped lips. So, finally, NVIDIA RTX 5080. Upgrade or not? Oh my god, I've never sounded more China. Okay, enough. Firstly, if you're on a 30 series, I'm talking about 3080 or older, it's a solid generational leap. You get better DLSS, better RTX at 4K, and overall faster performance. Number two, if you're already rocking a 4080 or 4080 Super, it depends. The FPS gains is less impressive, about 10 to 12% and up to 17% in ray traced games. But if you're gaming on a high refresh rate, 1440p or 4K higher resolution monitor as well, multi-frame generation does make gameplay feel smoother, especially if you're already running 80 FPS or higher. It's like a cherry on top, if that 
makes sense. Personally, I only get maybe an hour or two to game each day, so I want the best experience possible. For me, as a bangsawan, it's a yes. How about you? Are you upgrading? Are you T20? Are you B40? Let us know in the comments below. And to all my international viewers who do not understand what Bangsawan, B40 or T20 is, you can find out in the comments below. Smart way to get engagement. I just thought about that. Hey, don't call me sneaky Asian, huh? Only my mother can call me that. And that is everything I have to say about the RTX 5080. If you have any questions, seriously leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell. And also follow us on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. My name is Not So Slim Shady, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I guess this cut is still not big enough to cover the whole camera.